So, welcome to Chapter 5, Troubleshooting Windows, app, uh, Windows and Applications. So, a big part here we're going to be focusing on is we're going to learn about the Windows tools that uh, can help us or aid us in troubleshooting Windows and application problems. We're going to learn about the six-step strategy. We're going to learn how to troubleshoot blue screens. And we're going to also learn how to uh, troubleshoot problems with applications. The Windows troubleshooting tools uh, are in our textbook, chapter, uh, chapter 5, table 5, 1. Those are the page numbers. The big thing is, it's a list of Windows tools. You want to know what tools are available in Windows and what they do. But that's what we've been focusing on through chapter 3 and chapter 4. So you guys should already have a good grasp on that. So the first strategy when dealing with computer problems is what should we do? We should approach the problem as an investigator. Be careful not to compound the problem through actions before we discover as much as we can. Basically, we're going to be dealing with users. And one of the biggest problems is you do not want to compound the problem by pissing off the user first. You want to be able to get as much information from that user as possible. So you can use that information to diagnose or to troubleshoot that problem. Ask questions until you understand, until you understand the source of the problem, until you understand what the problem may be, and until you have a good understanding of your expectations. Normally, a systematic methodology should be used. That way you're not wasting time, you're not going in circles. The six steps are interview users and backup data as required. Step two, establish a theory or theories. Step three, test your theory or theories. Step four, plan the fix and if possible, resolve the problem. That's gonna depend on the policies that are in place per the organization. Step five, verify that you fix the user's issue, and if possible, prevent. Prevent could also include user's training. Lastly, step six, document. Document your findings, document your actions, document the concerns and outcomes, document as much as possible. That way, if this issue occurs again, you can have another technician review it, and be safe. So let's go a little bit more in depth now. Strategies to troubleshooting any problem. Normally there are 13 rules and this is more general not specific that might help uh, when troubleshooting. Here is the first troubleshooting rule. Approach the problem, problem systematically. You want to be able to break these down into manageable chunks so that you do not waste time by going in circles. The part of rule one is start at the beginning and walk through it carefully. If you find more than one problem on the same computer, work on only one problem at a time. That's because trying to solve more than one problem at a time can get very confusing and can lead to greater issues. Step one. Part of that interviewing the user and backing up, here are some possible questions. Describe the problem. What error messages occur? What normally displays? What normally is not displaying? How did you know there was a problem? When did it start? What were you doing when it started? Maybe, have you done anything to correct it? Have you done anything differently? Have you plugged in anything differently? Uh, any changes lately? Have there any been any electrical or thunderstorms uh, lately? Ask some open-ended questions because you want to start seeing uh, what occurred. Maybe it only recently started occurring and it was only after something was installed, software or hardware. Then you can go, okay, well maybe that's associated with that hardware. Other questions? Have you made any additional configuration changes? 
has anyone else used your computer? One of the big ones is, is there valuable data that has not been backed up? That way you can uh, back it up before you work on it. Can you show me how to re reproduce the problem? Can you show me what you're doing that caused the problem? So, troubleshooting rule number two. Establish your priorities. Decide what's your first priority. When practical, ask the user for help deciding their priorities. The user is probably going to be more familiar with that system than you are, so maybe get the end user uh, involved. Rule three. Beware of user error. If the suspect this then maybe ask the user to show you how the problem and watch what the user is doing. Could be as simple as, how does the user turn off their computer? Do they do it safely or do they just unplug the surge protector? So you might want to watch uh, the user for some errors. Rule 4. Keep calm. Don't rush. Breathe. Any wrong move long term can be costly. That means carefully plan your moves so that you're not trying to move too quickly and do more damage. Back up important data. Any data that is critical, back it up. If you're not sure or if you're not uh, certain that there is current backup, back it up. Just flat out back it up. It is easier to back it up and not have to stress than to have to worry if you messed up someone's data. Step two, examining the system and make your best guesses. This is a part of developing your theory. Number five, make no assumptions. That's one of the harder rules to follow is try to get the user to reproduce the errors. Don't make assumptions. Try to only go through what you see. Do your own investigating. So if the user says the internet's not working, try it yourself. Let the user do it first so that you can see what they're doing, but then try it again yourself just to make sure. Rule six, simple things first. Most problems are easily fixed, but simple things are gonna make these go a lot quicker. Follow the process from the best theory and tests. So don't just develop one theory. Maybe have two or three or four and test the best theories first. Reproduce the problem and observe if you can. Decide if the problem is hardware or software. Part of that's going to be trying to observe the issue. Make your best guess and go with it. Rule seven, become a researcher. See what's out there for the documentation. See uh, what information is in the tickets. You wanna see what's available. Maybe look at manufacturing's website. Maybe check uh, forms for those hardware uh, products. You want to do some research. Don't be afraid to use manufacturers website for heart, uh, for help, whether it be hardware or software. Step three, test your theory. Test your best theories. If one theory doesn't work, test your second, test your third, test your fourth. If they still don't work, go back and find some more theories. Work through those. Examples of a test. Video does not work and you sus suspect a loose cable. So what you can do is maybe check the connection. See if it's loose or not. How would you test your theory? Is you check to see if it's loose or not. If it is loose, connect it again, make sure uh, it's secured, and then uh, verify that that fixed the user's problem. Rule number eight, divide and conquer. Isolate the problem, remove one hardware or one software component after another, and how you can isolate the problem. That's going to be more dependent on the issue, but you're wanting to look at things specifically. Divide and conquer. 
Try the following in Windows, stop all non-essential services, i.e. start in safe mode. Maybe boot from a CD or DVD to emulate an operating system. Test the hard drive. So you want to see where the problem is occurring. You want to see what's causing the problem. You want to test your ideas. You want to test your theories to verify. Rule 9. Write things down. You want to take notes, draw diagrams, you want to be able to, to, to uh, keep moving forward, to keep focus. Rule 10, don't assume the worst. If a hard drive is not working, don't assume that everything is gone. Stay calm. Rule 11, all those fails, reboot and start over. Take a break, walk away, calm down. When you're calmed down a little bit, come back and start again. Working while you're stressed is not going to be helpful whatsoever. Step 4. Plan your solution and if possible, fix the problem. Rule 12. Use the least invasive solution first. You want to fix the problem. You want to return the system back to its normal working conditions with the least amount of effort on your part. You want to not go digging through users data unless you have to. Rule 13. Know your starting point. Know your theory. That way you'd have a good idea of where to start from. Find out what works, what doesn't work before you start taking anything apart. You don't want to say, well I'm having issues with my mouse, but you've already taken apart the printer. You want to be more specific. Okay, so those are the general 13 rules for troubleshooting. Continuing on with step 4, plan your solution and if possible fix the problem. Consider different solutions, select the least invasive one, verify with the company policy or the organizational policy that you're capable of doing it. Before applying your solution, make sure that it works. Lastly, make sure the problem is fixed. Step 5. After a problem is fixed, reboot, verify, double check, have the user check, make sure the user has verified and signed off on it, ask yourself the question, could this problem have been prevented? If so, try to prevent it. And that does include sometimes user training. Last step, documentation. Document. Document what happened. Document things that were said. Document as much as possible. So, help desk software normally comes with some type of ticket system. That way, you can put in a request for work to be done. And then it can be assigned to someone, and then the work gets done. A ticket system does not have to be with just help desk. Alright, so let's go ahead and move on to our blue screens of death. Troubleshooting a blue screen error and improper shutdown. Normally, a blue screen is going to be known as the blue screen of death, or BSOD. It's normally a stop error at the top with a specific number. Here's an example. It's going to explain what item caused the uh, shutdown, and it will give you an error code. That way you could do some research to figure out how to prevent it. Troubleshooting uh, our blue screens. Normally how do we uh, deal with it? If it just happens occasionally, you ignore it. If it happens more frequently, then you start troubleshooting. Then you start seeing, well, what caused it or what was going on with it. One every now and again not that big of an issue. One frequently does require us to start looking into it. Normally we can check event viewer so we can start seeing what events were uh, happening around that time. That's always a good place to start. Maybe look at uh, the uh, message center or the messages in our uh, action center to see what messages were happening. Event viewer is normally going to be your best bet but 
Again, keep your options open. Maybe uh, after you have one or two, let's double check that all the software is up to date. So Windows is up to date. Maybe see uh, what's recently changed. Maybe a check disk. So it just kind of depends. There's lots of reasons for our blue screens. Memory and drivers are a big part of that. So making sure that you have sufficient memory, making sure that you have uh, up-to-date drivers are a good thing to just prevent some of these blue screens. Now, keep in mind, that's not the only reason we have blue screens, but that's one of the big ones. So common blue screen errors, bad pool header, could occur for a variety of reasons, such as corrupted Windows update, bad memory, or corrupted application. NTFS file system, maybe the hard drive is getting corrupted. Kernel data, could just mean that the paging file is messing up. Divide by zero error, it's caused by an application. These are just some common ones. Not that these are all of them. Okay, moving forward. Patches. Make sure that when you have a 32-bit processor, you're getting 32-bit applications, and you're getting the appropriate patches for those applications. Same thing for 64-bit. You want to make sure that you are getting the appropriate patches for the appropriate bit version that you have. All CPUs and PCs today are a hybrid processor. The term x86 through 64 return refer to these processors and also maybe refer to a 64-bit operating system, meaning it can handle both 32-bit and 64-bit. Guidelines, normally an IA64 is only 64-bit Intel. An X64 is just an X64 or just an, a 64-bit processing technology. The big thing here is to realize that 64-bit processors can process 32-bit and 64-bit. However, a 32-bit processor cannot process 64-bit commands. Memory diagnosis. All those spells you can always reboot in safe mode or reboot into the advanced boot option or the boot manager so that you can load the Windows diagnostics. And one of those will be memory diagnostics. Here we go. This will allow us to load Windows, di or Windows memory diagnostics. You boot off the disk, you click on repair your computer, and you'll get a repair option. You'll also get a command line option. So you can deal with things like system file checker, SFC. That way you could do a quick scan from, from it. So dealing with an improper shutdown, normally if the PC just turns off, it could be that there's an overheating issue. Memory, motherboard, processor, video, or just everything altogether could just have overheated. So you gotta let it cool down. Normally the rule of thumb is you do not want anything to exceed 38 degrees Celsius. Booting into safe mode, you can uh, go to MS Config and boot to safe mode, or tap 8 when the computer is loading to boot into safe mode. But yeah, safe mode is going to be one of the important areas. Problem with applications could be the application, the hardware, the software, could be part of the data, could just also be that it doesn't like another application. Lastly, could be from the users. So steps for dealing with applications. You're going to notice very similar steps. Interview and backup. Step two, error messages. What, what does the log say? What does uh, the internet say? What are some of the prompts that you're getting? Here Windows uh, Action Center is reporting to application not being nice. Step four, or step two continue, I guess, technically. For solving application errors, error messages, they may help, they may not. Event viewer may help, or not. Consider 
the data or the application is corrupted. That might be simpler. How do you test? You reinstall the software. Step four, maybe consider outside interference. Maybe it's a virus. Maybe resources. So you're going to have to do this, again, systematically. You're going to have to look at the application. Maybe look at the system as a whole. Is it a hard drive? Is it bad memory? You want to act like an investigator. Divide and conquer. Maybe it could be software. Maybe it could be part of Windows. Maybe you need it as an administrator. Some version of QuickBooks do not work in Windows 10. You can make them work, but you have to finagle it. So what to do when an application hangs? Maybe look in Task Manager. Maybe in Task It. Maybe look at the processor ID. Maybe look at that PID and kill that PID. You can use Task Kill to force the killing of certain process IDs. What to do when a file uh, fails to open? Maybe look at what extension it is. Maybe look at what program is opening it. All else fails, you can always right click any uh, object in Windows and have an open with option. That way you can change the program that opens it. Here we go. Open with. This will allow you to change what program opens with what extensions. There's a gray check mark down here. You can do this so that it will only open it for one time, or you can change it so that it always opens it. It's up to you. What do you do if the service fails to start? Normally, restart, see what happens. Maybe caused by corrupted or missing service programs. Could just be that there's a virus. There's going to be some outside resources here. Maybe start looking for what the service does, and if there's other people that have the same issue, how do they fix it? What about a DLL or program component missing? You may have to start putting in DLLs or dynamic link library files for certain programs to work. Sometimes viruses will mimic a DLL. Antiviruses will accidentally remove those DLLs. So again, items to consider. Maybe look at the relationship between the program and the components. Part of that's going to be the COM plus. The COM is for the component services. And those are certain services that are registered to a, a program. Here's our component service. You can use some of the uh, utilities to troubleshoot that. What about what to do when an application has never worked? Maybe uh, think about using its compatibility. If you right click on it, go to properties, you have compatibility options. Maybe running it as a different uh, user or a different uh, set of privileges. Or maybe set, check the digital signature. Maybe the signature is invalid. There's some options. Compatibility has lots of options. Maybe have it run as a program from XP. Just kind of depends. That's actually it for this chapter. So I wanted to thank you guys. Hope you guys have a great day. Thanks. Bye.